Hey, BIS 333, Sarah Popish here. My fascinating idea number two, Moore's Law. What is Moore's Law? Well, Gordon E. Moore published an article in Electronics Magazine in 1965 entitled Cramming More Components Onto Integrated Circuits. At the time, he was the Research and Development Director for Fairchild Transistors, and he would later go on to start Intel. In his article, he talked about how transistors on processors electronics would double every two years, while the cost would simultaneously decrease. This economic observation has fueled the technology growth of the past 30 years and became known as Moore's Law. Why Moore's Law? Well, my dad was really into technology when I was a kid, and he talked to me about how it evolves every 18 to 20 after this class, I now know that he was talking about more law. It fascinated me then, and it intrigued me now, and I wanted to find out more about his law, what it means for today's technology, and also would it ever end. We cannot live life without in some way being impacted by Moore's Law. It's obvious that our computers and phones have chips in them influenced by Moore's Law, but some things we don't even think about are in our day-to-day -day because of that. Netflix, Amazon, and even the internet would not exist without Moore's Law. Companies, schools, and individuals are impacted by Moore's Law and should be aware of it in relation to the technology available today. The history of computing gives us an example of the relevance of Moore's Law and the innovation it has spurred. The graphic on the right shows a visual of the decreasing size of processors in their housing. Currently, there are almost 50 billion transistors in one chip. They can't even be seen with the naked eye. And if an Intel-based Android phone were built in 1971, it would take, be the size of a parking space. Will Moore's Law end soon, or has it already ended? David Rotman with MIT Review believes it has ended, and it is more of an economic meter than a technological one. Making these microchips even smaller has become more expensive, and researchers are looking into more deep-thinking technologies that require chips to be more specifically programmed. Some real world examples, Neil Thompson, an economist at MIT, suggests that programmers could switch programming language from Python to C to create efficiency without actually having to adjust the physical processors. Intel's also working on making 3G chips in an attempt to maximize efficiency while saving money in space. And other companies like Google and Microsoft have begun making chips for a specific deep thinking artificial intelligence needs. Could we eventually even see subatomic transistors one day? The increase in computational complexity has brought about some amazing innovations, such as the Internet of Things. But could all these connected devices be giving way too much of our information? In an article in Science Direct, it discusses the problems that could arise with increased usage of smart devices, such as informed consent, privacy, and information security. And I mean, even China could be going a bit too far with this. As recent as two years ago, China began unveiling facial recognition technology to keep track of its citizens. And recent reports have talked about China's detainment and intimidation of certain classes of people due to this facial recognition technology. Could that mean security threats, threats for Americans from Chinese and Russian data collectors? The US government is in a data war with China, according to a December article in Foreign Policy. In summary, Moore's Law, an observation made in 1965, has been the engine that has run the technology growth of the last 30 years. Thanks to Moore's Law, we have the internet, smartphones, and the internet of things. And that boom could be over, but Moore's Law still motivates researchers to, to develop new technologies like internet of things. But those do come with some eth ethical issues that need to be addressed. So my first research, I. A uh, resource I learned, the end of Moore's Law does not mean technology innovation has ended. And then the second uh, resource I learned Moore's, in Moore's article, which he predicts automation in cars, computers and homes, and handheld devices, and I found that fascinating. And then from the resources three and four, I learned about the new ways chips are being used for specialized AI uses. And then my step-by-step, -step, I created these slides in Google Slides. I downloaded Screencast-O-Matic, which was free. Um, and I recorded the video, and it's very easy. Um, and next, I'm going to upload the video to YouTube. Thanks so much.